March 2nd, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Luke chapter 17 from the New Testament. Jesus said to his disciples, Stumbling blocks are sure to come, but woe to the one through whom they come. It would be better for him to have a millstone tied around his neck and be thrown into the sea than for him to cause one of these little ones to sin. Watch yourselves. If your brother sins, rebuke him. If he repents, forgive him. Even if he sins against you seven times in a day, and seven times returns to you saying, I repent, you must forgive him. The apostle said to the Lord, Increase our faith. So the Lord replied, If you had faith in the size of a mustard seed, you would say to this black mulberry tree, Be pulled out by the roots and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Would any one of you say to your slave who comes in from the field after plowing or shepherding sheep, come at once and sit down for a meal? Won't the master instead say to him, get my dinner ready and make yourself ready to serve me while I eat and drink, then you may eat and drink? He won't thank the slave because he did what he was told, will he? So you too, when you have done everything you were commanded to do, should say, we are slaves undeserving of special praise. We have only done what was our duty. Now on the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. As he was entering a village, ten men with leprosy met him. They stood at a distance, raised their voices, and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said, Go and show yourself to the priest. And as they went along, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He fell with his face to the ground at Jesus' feet and thanked him. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus said, Were not ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Was no one found to turn back and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to the man, Get up and go your way. Your faith has made you well. Now at one point the Pharisees asked Jesus when the kingdom of God was coming. So he answered, The kingdom of God is not coming with signs to be observed, nor will they say, Look, here it is, or there, for indeed the kingdom of God is in your midst. Then he said to the disciples, The days are coming when you will desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you will not see it. Then people will say to you, Look, there he is, or look, here he is. Do not go out or chase after them. For just like the lightning flashes and lights up the sky from one side to the other, so will the Son of Man be in his day. But first he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. Just as it was in the days of Noah, so too it will be in the days of the Son of Man. People were eating, they were drinking, they were marrying, they were being given in marriage, right up to the day Noah entered the ark. Then the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, just as it was in the days of Lot, people were eating, drinking, buying, selling, planting, building. But on the day Lot went out from Sodom, fire and sulfur rained down from heaven and destroyed them all. It will be the same on the day the Son of Man is revealed. On that day, anyone who is on the roof with his goods in the house must not come down to take them away. And likewise, the person in the field must not turn back. Remember Lot's wife? Whoever tries to keep his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life will preserve it. I tell you, in that night there will be two people in one bed. One will be taken and the other left. There will be two women grinding grain together. One will be taken and the other left. Then the disciples said to him, Where, Lord? He replied to them, Where the dead body is, there the vultures will gather. God, I was reading in my commentary, one of my commentaries about Luke 17 from the Bible. And where Jesus is talking about people eating and drinking and buying and selling and planting and building. The words that the commentary used was, it was a common day of activity. 
Gosh, that really bothered me. <laughs> we seem to do that every day. We seem to have common days of activities where we get up and we eat. And for some of us, we go to work. For some of us, we might go to school. For some of us, we might get the kids ready to go to school. Then it's on to the next thing and on to the next thing. And before we know it, we're heading to bed to start the process all over again. And throughout the day, we have done common things. My life is starting to get to the point, thanks be to you and the path that you've put me on, where it's getting harder and harder to have common things in my life. I seek more and more to spend my days in your word, to spend my days telling other people about you. The common things are starting to bother me, for lack of a better word. And I know you know this. We've had huge conversations about this lately because it's hard. It's hard to live a life that's not of this world when you are called to be one of your children. It is very difficult because it's not only is the world all around us through TV and the internet and billboards and school and books and it's not only all around us, but it just seems to seep into every single part of everything we do. And it waters down what you've called us to do. And so we find ourselves doing common things throughout the day. God, I would ask today that everyone who's listening to your words seek out uncommon today seek out to have an uncommon life that for people to look at their lives and and think it a bit odd how we live a bit different of how we live because of you that we forgive people that other people don't see as forgivable that we love people that other people don't see as lovable that we talk about this amazing relationship we have with your son a relationship that is filled with love that has never stopped. That's filled with forgiveness of every single one of our sins. And that we talk about an eternal life that must seem a bit odd in a common world. God, help us every single day to seek out the uncommon. You didn't put us here on earth to be common. You didn't give us this amazing planet to live out our days being common and sitting in front of the TV or the internet or going out and eating and drinking. If we're truly called to be your children, there should be a sense of urgency to being uncommon. There should be this uncomfortableness in our lives every single day of this urgency that at any given moment the person standing next to us could either be taken up to heaven to live with you or not or sadly not God come into our lives today and help us walk every single step as uncommon have words that come out of our mouth that are so different to what the world offers everyone that people stop and listen to the words you are having us say and have our actions follow through with what those words are. I know my passion and excitement for you, God, is starting to cause a lot of rumbles in my life. And I'm actually okay with that. <laughs> I'm probably more okay with that than most people. But it is causing other people to be uncomfortable around me. And I know you're okay with that and I'm okay with that. But for the people who are, cause, who are starting to be uncomfortable around me, can you come into their lives, God? Can you help them see that the common life that they're holding on to so tightly is nothing. Nothing compared to what you can offer us. 
that their safety net, their comfortableness that they're holding on to so tightly, and I'm making them uncomfortable by reading these words to them every single day, that that uncomfortableness is actually a good thing. You didn't call your people to be common. You actually called us your masterpieces. There's nothing common about that. God, thank you for all that you have called us to and allow us today to live up to what you've called us to do and to have just an amazing, uncommon day filled with your love, your forgiveness, and your passion for why you really created us. In your son's name we pray. Amen.